This is kind of a complicated problem where we have two rings of charge, each one setting up an electric field, and three points at which we're supposed to analyze the net electric field. The problem gives us three different scenarios for whether the rings are both positively charged, both negatively charged, or one positive and one negative, and we want to rank the magnitudes of the net electric fields at each of those three points. So let's start with part A of the problem, where we're ranking those three scenarios at the central point P1. Now in scenario 1, where both rings are positively charged, that means that there are electric field lines pointing away from the rings. Remember that electric field lines, by convention, point away from positive charges and towards negative ones. So from the leftmost ring of charge, we have electric field lines coming out of the ring towards the central point, and there are also going to be electric field lines coming out of the right ring, again, towards that same central point. And what you'll notice is that since these two rings have equal distances from that point, and their electric field lines are all pointing in basically opposite directions from one another at P1, that means that these electric field vectors are going to be canceling each other out. This is because there is symmetry in this situation. And remember that when there's symmetry, the charges cancel out. So for scenario 1, there is zero net field at point 1. For scenario 2, where both the rings of charge are negative, we basically have the exact same deal. The only difference is that, since it's negative, the electric field lines are pointing towards the ring everywhere, which means that at P1, there's an electric field pointing to the left, or I guess towards the ring on the left, and from the right field, the, the right ring, again, the electric field lines are pointing towards that ring. So we basically have the exact same scenario as with scenario one, where the electric field lines from the two rings are all pointing in opposite directions at that center point, and they're just going to cancel each other out. So once again, there's a net field of zero at point one. For scenario three, however, one of the rings is negatively charged and one of them is positively charged. This time, the, the electric field lines are not pointing in opposite directions at point 1, because some of those field lines are going to be pointing towards that negative ring. And from the positive ring, there are going to be arrows, electric field lines, pointing away from that positive ring. But these ones are actually going to be in the same direction as the negatively charged one. So in this scenario, the electric field lines are actually adding each other up. They're actually magnifying each other instead of canceling each other out. So in this third scenario, we're actually going to have a non-zero net field because things aren't being canceled out. So 4.1, it is scenario 3 that has the largest electric field magnitude, because it's the only one that has any magnitude. Situations 1 and 2 are equal in the ranking, because they both have a net zero electric field at points 1. Now let's talk about part B of the problem, which asks about point P2, which is at the center of ring B. The important thing to recognize about this part of the problem is that since the point we're analyzing is right at the center of one of the rings, that means that there is symmetry from one of the rings around that point. Regardless of whether point 2 is regardless of whether the right ring is positively charged or negatively charged, all the electric field lines generated by that ring are all centered symmetrically around point 2 and will always be canceling each other out in any of the scenarios. In all three of the scenarios, we can basically ignore any contribution to the electric field from ring B because it's just canceling each other, it's just canceling itself out around that point. And so in all three cases, point two is only receiving any electric field contribution from the leftmost line because that's the only one of the rings that is not symmetrical around the point. So at point 2, the ranking is that all three scenarios all tie. They all have an equal net field at point 2 because of that symmetry of the ring around the point. 
Finally, with part C, we're looking at point 3, which is located to the right of ring B, to outside of this whole arrangement. For point 3, in the case where both rings are positively charged, or in the case where both rings are negatively charged, the electric field lines from both rings are going to be pointing kind of in the same general direction where point 3 is. In the case where both rings are positively charged, all the electric field lines from both rings are going to be kind of pointing towards the right at point 3. In the case where both rings are negatively charged, all the electric field lines are going to be adding each other up and pointing to the left at point 3. So in those two cases, they're both adding each other up. The electric field lines are magnifying each other in the same way. So the net field there is going to be equal for those two scenarios. In the case where one of them is negatively charged and one of them is positively charged, however, there will be some electric field lines pointing generally towards the right from the positively charged one, and there will be some electric field lines pointing towards the left from the negatively charged one. So there will at least be some cancelling out in that case. And therefore, the resulting net magnitude will be smaller than in the cases for 1 and 2. So we can say that 1 and 2 have equal net field magnitudes, and that they will be greater than the magnitude for the third scenario. And that is how our rankings will go for this problem. I know that was kind of confusing, I hope I still made sense, nevertheless, but I hope this video helped you out, and if it did, please consider subscribing or donating to my Patreon, as that'll help, me, uh, help, that'll help me out in making more videos just like this. If you have a request or a question, leave a comment down below, and I hope you all have a lovely day. Bye-bye.